Hi everyone, my name is Federico Tartarini and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add the nomenclature to your document as you can see here on my screen. So after this video you will be able to add this section called nomenclature, define the variables as you prefer, define the definition of the variables and also add the um, unit here. We're going to be able to reference this variable in the text, which is going to be extremely handy. And as you can see here, we're going to capitalize it if it just comes at the beginning of a sentence or add it into the text if uh, with a lowercase or just the variable name if you have already referenced it in the text. Okay, so this video is mostly about the nomenclature. It's not, I'm not going to cover glossary and acronyms. I've already covered that in my previous video. So I will just encourage you to check my previous video and you can find a link here at the top in the screen. You can click on that if you want to find out more about the glossary and acronyms. Okay, just a quick word. What is the difference between nomenclature, glossary and acronym? So glossary, we're going to add terms in which we, are, we commonly use in our sector, for instance, mixed mode building but not every of not everyone in the of the readers might be familiar with this term okay so here we define mixed mode building and we provide a definition of this term and we're actually referring it when it's appearing in the page acronyms on the other end are just abbreviation okay and this is a list of abbreviation that we're going to use in our text sometimes acronyms can be also added to the nomenclature so please check if you're writing a scientific paper with uh, the journal guidelines, and maybe they will suggest you to add it to the nomenclature or not. Okay, so just please check with that. But in this video, we're mostly focusing on the nomenclature where we have variable, definition, and unit. So I just would like to ask you one quick thing. If you are going to like the video or the content of this video is please uh, click on the like button. That really helps and helps with the YouTube algorithm to let them know that you enjoy this content and please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, just please feel free to add a comment down below and I will try to respond as quick as possible. So here in this video, I'm going to use Overleaf and um, I'm going to use just Overleaf because it's very simple to compile a document. Of course, you can use the same package on your computer locally and then compile the document locally on your computer. So that is going to work equally. So that is not going to change anything. So how can we get started with the nomenclature? Well, the first package that we're going to use in pocket import is called acronym okay so i know it sounds a little bit strange because you're going to use an acronym package to print the nomenclature but i that has several advantages there is also a package called nomencl and uh, i will put a link in the description uh, down below and i will just spell it out for you here just if you want to find out a little bit more so this is the other package that you could use but I don't like it so much because this package, yes, it allows you to create a nomenclature in a very easy way, but then you will not be able to reference the variable that you have specified in the nomenclature into your document. But I will show you that with the acronym package, you can do that and it's going to make your life much simpler. Okay. And also we'll show you a bonus tip. So stick with me till the end of the video in which I'm going to show you how to add all your acronyms into a separate file and then load it inside uh, LaTeX, which is going to be very useful, but I will cover that at the end of the video. So just stick around if you want to find out more. So first thing, import a use package and we, we need to say use package and we are going to use the package is called acronym, okay? And here we're going to add an option which is print, so print only used. So why we are adding this option? Because we want to print only the acronyms that we're going to use in the text. So only if the acronym is appearing in the text, we want it to show in the section called uh, nomenclature. Otherwise, if it's not appearing in the text, we don't want to show it because of course, uh, maybe it's a refuse that we define a variable before, but then we're not using it in the text. So of course should not appear in our nomenclature section. Then we go here to begin document. So let's just recompile. So uh, Overleaf can install the package for us. Then we go inside here, begin document. And after begin document, we have make title here. We are making our title. Again, I covered that in another video. And here we're going to add a new section. So to add a new section is very simple, just uh, type section, 
we are going to add an asterisk. Why we are adding an asterisk? Because we don't want it to be number. And we're going to call this section no man tool. Okay, let's recompile. And we should see a new section coming up, nomenclature. Okay, so here we just have to write a little bit of code, but I will show you all the steps. Okay, so first we need to start with the command begin. Okay, so we're going to start begin and then we are going to start what? Acronym. Okay, acronym. Enter. Make sure if you're not using overleaf that you also have the closing tag and acronym. Okay. So inside here, we're going to define all, acro all our acronyms, okay? So how will we define an acronym? Very simple. We're going to use the ACRO definition, where the first term in the curly braces is the unique key that we're going to use to refer to that uh, acronym, okay? So in this case, we're going to use the letter, T, the letter T to refer to the temperature, here in the square braces, we are going to define how we want this variable to appear in the text. Okay, so in this case, we want to be lowercase t, sub subscript, and we are going to say we want to say t dry bulb. Okay, in another curly braces, after the square braces, we have to provide the definition of the variable. Okay, so we're going to call it dry bulb air temperature, and then Finally, what we want to do is to add the unit. How can we do that? We use backward slash acro extra, acro extra, and then a set of curly braces. And inside here, we're going to define the, the unit. Okay. In this case, we're going to use the math, so double uh, uh, dollar sign, and we're going to say superscript, superscript, and then we're going to say circ so we're going to use the circ just for the circle that uh, end of the symbol and then c if i compile this document okay let's compile it to make sure that everything is working fine so everything is working fine but the variable is not appearing here in the text why is not appearing here in the text because we have not referenced it in the text itself okay because we just say print only used here at the top in the option okay so let's go into the text here in the introduction. Let's refer to that uh, just entry that we have just specified. So we say D and then we say AC backward slash AC. OK, and here we are referring to that variable. So we have to enter the unique key that we just we just have specified, which is T. And we say is uh, very hot. OK, so let me fix the tab type. Hot. let's recompile this document and let's see that everything is working fine so here we have t dry bulb we have dry bulb air temperature comma c that's the unit that we are using okay but there is uh, okay sorry there is a small error so here should have been acro extra so let's recompile okay fantastic so we have the variable here the definition of the variable and the unit here in the text is appearing with the definition and the variable in um, in brackets okay the thing that is very nice is that every time now that i'm going to refer to the same variable okay so we say uh, the um, ac so we say ac t let's say should be lower and we compile the document again Maybe again without the typo. Okay. We can see that it's actually quite nice, this feature, because the first time that we have referred to this uh, entry in the nomenclature, LaTeX for us is spelling out the definition of the variable and putting the variable in uh, brackets. But then the second time that we are adding it in a sentence, we're going just to show the variable name, which is what we want, okay? Because we don't want to specify, we want to say dry bulb air temperature every time. Of course, uh, you can change that and you can change that behavior. OK, how can we change that? How can we spell out uh, the full variable name every time or any time after? So we can say ACF. ACF says pool. So it's both the definition and the variable. OK, so as you can see here, I'm type this is now the, uh, providing the definition again. The opposite of ACF is ACS. 
ACS is going to show only the variable name. Okay? Be mindful when you use this command because you are going to alter a bit the um, normal behavior of the software. So you most likely want to just use ACF maybe in a caption of a figure or in a table, but just be mindful because it's better perhaps that you just use AC and then LaTeX is going to take care of that automatically. Another thing that I want to show you is if you want to capitalize uh, and because the variable is coming at the beginning of uh, a sentence, okay? So if you want to capitalize that, so ACT is higher um, than uh, 20, let's say degree, just for the moment. So we're going to say this. So we are compiling, as you can see here, is appearing with a capital, okay? Why is appearing with a capital? Because the definition, because we say AC, A with a capital. There are a few other comments that you might find useful. I will put a link to this PDF in the this, uh, a link to yes, in the link in the description down below. And these are a couple of other comments. If you want to reset all of them, you can use this command here in the text and just have a look if there are other comments that you want to use. I think I covered the most important. Of course, there is also the plural, but since you are using it as a variable in the nomenclature, I don't think you'll want to make it plural, okay? But if you want to make it plural, you can say ACP, okay? So let's see another thing and how to make this nomenclature a little bit better and how to add another entry in the nomenclature, okay? So let's define another variable, which is ACRO. And then this time we're going to define RH, curly braces. We want to show it as RH, and this is going to be relative, relative humidity. Okay, so let's compile just to make sure that everything is working fine. And it is working fine because it's not showing us our entry because we have a not referencing in the text. And then we're saying the AC. And in this case, we are going to say RH is uh, mm, higher than 80%. So let's just add a bit of text and let's compile, sorry, backward slash and then percent symbol. Let's compile it again. And perfect, it's coming up. So as you can see here, we have RH and it's coming up here, relative humidity in the text. There is one thing that I don't like of this package, but I will show you how to change. So the spacing between the variables in the nomenclature. But we can easily change that by just writing a little bit of code. Okay? So inside here, at the top, before begin acronyms, under section, just between section and begin acronyms, we're going to change the normal spacing between lines, and then we're going to reset it to the default value just after the nomenclature. Okay? How can we do that? We say a renew command, okay, a renew command, and inside here we have baseline stretch, baseline stretch, and then we're going to specify 0 0.75, okay, and then of what? Of the normal size, normal size. Let's compile that. Okay, so this has decreased here. But we it as decrease also in our text here. So after an acronym here, so let's go here and then let's set it back to one. So one and then compile again. So perfect. Here in the text now is as we want it. So it has not affected this in the text, but it has affected here in the nomenclature. So if you want to have it even less spaced here, so we can do control enter and we have decreased this uh, spacing here and we can increase decrease it a little bit more i will let you change and play a bit it depends on which template do you use and what is the normal size defined at the beginning of your document so we let you play with that another thing that i want to show you is what i like to do is to have a little bit more of space between the variable and the variable definition how can you do that by adding an option, so after begin acronym, and you can say longest. Okay, so let's compile it again. Perfect. So here it also, this has affect, as you can see, a little bit the spacing between the two variables. Okay, so now it looks much better. So all these are indented in the same way. And uh, basically that's it. 
So basically now we can reference this, all this nomenclature entry in our text. One last thing that I, I want to show you and I want to mention because I don't like it so much. As you can see here, the R age, because it's not wrapped inside the um, percent, uh, the dollar sign, is appearing in bold. Okay? So we can change that also and we can change that uh, how it's going to look. We just have to write a little bit more of code again, but it's going to be simple because I'm going to provide it for you. So we're going to say a new command, okay? And then we have to say a syllable font, a syllable font, and then we have to specify one, okay? So don't worry too much if you don't understand this command here because it's not so important. I will just provide everything that you need to know uh, down in the... Um, in the in the comment below or i will put a gist on github so we need to say text as c and then we have to say a c s font and then we have to say a uh, one okay so let's recompile just to make sure and as you can see the bold thing is gone okay so don't worry too much if you didn't understand exactly what this comment stands for. I will just put it down in the, under the comment in the video so you just can copy that as well for in, uh, in your uh, paper. One final thing, I told you that I had a special tip for you if you wanted to, if you're follow, still following along. What I want to show you is how to add a new text file. So just stick with me here. So we say new file and we're going to call it uh, or we can call it nomenclature. Okay, so now we have a new file called nomenclature text and the file of course is empty. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy all these section here, control X inside the nomenclature file. Okay, and inside here, we're going to say input nomenclature. Okay, so let's recompile and let's see if anything has changed. Technically, nothing has changed and that's what we want. So this uh, you may ask why i want to do this well first of all the paper is cleaner and we can just go inside here when we want to define a new entry so let me just copy a new entry where i define the speed of the light okay so a c r o c c is what we, what we want to show speed of light in vacuum in an actual system and here we define the variable so let's go back into main and then we say the a c and then we say c because the speed of light uh, is uh, very fast okay so let's recompile the document Control enter so here we can see that the speed of light has been defined here is referenced here in the text but why this thing is very nice because we can define a lot of nomenclature entries and then later on once we are done with this paper and we're writing a new paper you can just copy this file across into the new document file folder and then you can use this one and don't worry if you don't use all the acronyms that you have defined and specified here. Why? Because we are at the top, we say print only used. Okay, so if you are not using some of them, like, again, let me show you. So you remove this one and you recompile the document. The C is gone. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's here. You can keep this file here for your reference and you can keep adding variable and variable and variable. But then eventually, in the paper, you will only print the one that are actually appearing. Just be mindful and just remember, please, that for each ACRO, you can only have one unique uh, key here. So for temperature, we're going to refer it with T, R, H, and C. Okay, so if you define another temperature, which in this case could be the wet bulb temperature. So in this case, we want to call T wet bulb, and this is going to be wet bulb temperature okay you can do that but this a uh, unique key has to change okay so you can call it for instance tw okay that's fine but it cannot be t as this one otherwise these two will collide and then latex will throw you an error okay i really hope you found this video useful but please check uh, my channel if you want to know learn more about latex and if you like the content of this video, please consider uh, hitting the thumbs up button and uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much for listening.